Buenas tardes, Nogalenses. So, um, just really quick before we we, we want to get right into things, but um, welcome back to our show. We're really excited for our show today. We've got Arturo Garino, the mayor of Nogales, once again back in the mayor's seat, and we've got um, and we've got a lot to talk about. We've got AmeriCorps that's in town. We've got um, School Choice Week. We've got events coming up. Great things. Uh, we're going to take a quick break because we love to support local businesses and we're going to show you some advertisements real quick and then we'll be right back with the show. Cropper's Nogales Auto Center, your local dealer of Chevy, Buick, and GMC. The best place to find the newest, award-winning Chevy, Buick, and GMC models. But there's more. Cropper's also provides professional certified service, parts, and a full-service body shop and collision center. Come on over and see for yourself everything Cropper's has to offer. Located at 1831 North Grand Avenue, Nogales, Arizona. www.croppercare.com, 520-762-6446. Welcome back. I'm really, really excited for our show tonight, guys. I'm excited to be here with all of you. Um, I want you to give, uh, do us a favor really quick. And if you're watching right now, give this video a like and a share. Make sure that you know the whole community sees it and people outside of the community. We've got lots of viewers who aren't from here, who, who watch us, who keep their eye on the border, and they, they watch Nogales. So share this video so everyone can see it. Um, I'm really proud of something that we're doing now. I mean, I'm really proud of We Love Nogales. I mean, 2018, we got started. We knocked out 50 plus shows. In cuantos? Uh, pues, aquí ando con el Santos, ¿no? En menos que el año sacamos seis meses, sacamos 50 shows, algo así. Más que 50 shows. And it was a it was a great year, but we were just getting started. 2019, it's going to be huge. It's going to be really big. I think it's a great opportunity for the community and also for for the show too, yeah. because this is the only the one of the ways that the people they can find out about the different organizations, individuals, and and agencies that doing different community work. So this is a great opportunity and, and for them and also for, for, for the organization and also for the, for the individuals and the, the person that we provide all those services. Absolutely. So Santos, myself, and Edgardo, if you feel like you, we want to invite you. If you feel like you have something that you want to share with the community, if you're part of an organization that does some good and, and you feel like you need to get the word out, contact us. You can contact us right here on Facebook or you can email at us at contact at welovenogales.com. Um, get a hold of us. Let us know what you're doing. We'd love to have you on our show. Definitely, and we want to, to continue building community. And one way to do that is through this, this different show that we're doing in, during all these years. Absolutely. Ya saben que el Santos tiene su programa. ¿Cuándo es? Que son los miércoles, de are Wednesdays, de en la tarde, las 6 de la tarde. Y mi programa se enfoca más que nada en las organizaciones de, sin fines de lucro e individuos también que tienen algún tipo de producto o servicio que es para la comunidad y es con el fin pues de que se, ellos se den a conocer y que la gente de Nogales, de ambos Nogales y del Condado de Santa Cruz, pues tome ventaja y aproveche pues estas oportunidades que hay aquí en, en nuestra comunidad. ¿Y a ti uh -huh. no te gusta meter en las políticas entonces? No. <risa> Yo soy como la visca y no bailo ni contigo ni contigo. 
<laughs> Pero trabajo con todos. <laughs> muy bien. Muy bien. That's the best way to do it. Don't, don't start controversy like me. <laughs> so um, some of the great things that, that we're doing here at We Love Nogales is we're really, really proud to announce a new partnership that we have with the Santa Cruz County, Nogales Santa Cruz County Chamber of Commerce. We're really, really excited to work with them. Um, I was just this morning, I was at an event that they had, the government affairs meeting that went really, really well. I um, mean, they had some really cool stuff that they were doing. And so that's only one of the great things. We're working every day to, to bring in new sponsors and new partnerships and, and really help ourselves grow so that we can continue to promote the community. Right. It's true. Uh, actually, right now, we're working in, uh, in our tax season is coming right now. Every year, um, the Galles Community Development, through the VITA programs, will we provide uh, free tax assistance to the community. But not only we do or prepare accurate tax returns, we also provide it with different information, as a development opportunities from the different organizations so the community can take advantage and they can reimburse the money that they're going to receive in something positive and it's good for the families and for them. ¿Ya hiciste sus taxes o todavía no? No, todavía no son los taxes, pero pues ya estamos preparándonos. Ah, Precisamente bueno. estamos trabajando con un grupo que se llama AmeriCorps. AmeriCorps es un grupo de jóvenes de entre 18 y 24 años que están prohibiendo diferentes tipos de servicios aquí. En este caso están preparándose para, para, para preparar los taxis, pero también nos van a ayudar un poquito con la parte de la demolición de lo que es el, Oxford, el building de lo, del Foxworth para que sea una incubadora y una un coworking space, ¿no? También para la comunidad. Pero también ellos están trabajando con otras organizaciones. En sí, pues mismos. en la mañana, cuando yo fui al Government Affairs Meeting, ahí en el Ahí te los encontraste. Ahí estaban, ahí estaban haciendo repack. Sí, ¿te acuerdas que ellos también, precisamente anoche nos informaron que ellos uh, tienen, tienen la oportunidad de haber trabajado con diferentes organizaciones en tan poquito tiempo? O sea, ya fueron a Community Garden, ya estuvieron moviendo tierra para se continuar sembrando, fueron al... al Community Food Bank eh, y están yendo también con otras con otras organizaciones aquí como el Human, Human Society eh, y otras organizaciones también nos van a tomar ventaja de ellos y eh, pero al mismo tiempo no nomás tomamos ventaja de ellos sino que ellos también están haciendo creando comunidad y ellos están aprendiendo también nuevas técnicas skills herramientas que van a utilizar para para un futuro nos platicaban ayer precisamente de que este tipo de oportunidades está abierto pues para todos los ciudadanos eh, de Estados Unidos de entre 18 y 24 años que quieran participar en este tipo de proyectos Muy más bien. que nada ellos reciben pues diferentes beneficios, van a recibir pues becas para la escuela, van a recibir pues un tipo de, de allowances o de dinero que usan pues para comer y vivir, pero también tienen otras oportunidades y beneficios. También es una, decían que es una oportunidad para ellos para enfocarse y decir lo que van a estudiar, lo que van a hacer en un futuro y aparte pues para empezar a compartir con otras gentes, conocer nuevas gentes, nuevos lugares y aprender pues cómo hacer sharing, ¿no? Muchos, muchos jóvenes todavía no están, no están impuestos. Uno sí, porque éramos como 10 chamacos en la casa, <risa> pero ellos a veces nomás son uno o dos y no saben claro pues, que sí, cómo claro hacerle, que sí. ¿verdad? Y trabajar en equipo sobre todo, ¿verdad? Trabajar en equipo y cuidarse de sí mismo. Nos mencionaban también de que se sienten muy positivos en hogares, que se sienten bien recibidos, que se sienten pues muy a gusto con la, con el, también con el clima. Vienen de, de, de climas Hoy muy sí, muy claro es. que no me imagino. Pero, Oye, pues, una sí. pregunta. No, dime, dime. no tuve chance de terminar el episodio de ayer. Oh, so, for those of you who didn't see Santos' episode, I, yesterday um the people that were talking about the americorps um they were on his show last night and if you want to learn more about them you can watch that show pero una cosa que te quería preguntar es que um tenían miedo de, de venir a la frontera en sabes que mencionaron porque la, lo que es la, la media a veces da información muy incorrecta uh -huh. y fueron de las cosas o los impactos que, que mejor observaron y tuvieron que es una ciudad pues muy segura que es una, donde se sentían pues a gusto pues viviendo, trabajando y caminando por donde quisieran, pues, porque había pues mu mucho, mucha seguridad. Sobre ¿Ya todo. cruzaron? Oh, no, 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 no cruzaron no. todavía, pero sí están planeando cruzar, si quieren ah, cruzar. Bien. Eh, bueno. ent entonces, qué bueno que tengo la oportunidad ahorita de decirlo en español, porque ya también lo decíamos en inglés y también sí. la gente no... no a la Ayer fue toda la información. puro inglés, ¿no? Porque no hablan español. Yo les dije que tenía, ya tenían dos semanas aquí, que debieron haber hablado español, pero ¿verdad? Que claro que sí. No. Ah, sí, pues sí. Sí, después de dos días ya, ya debes de saber las... Pues mínimo... <ríe> Las palabras malas, ¿no? Pues claro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we're really excited about AmeriCorps. And, you know, right here in this building in CD, they're working on some stuff. Um, but, you know, something else that we're doing that, that We Love Nogales is doing that um, Edgardo and I have worked on and Santos is in on too is um, we're starting a new segment that will come out randomly called the We Love Nogales um, Exclusives. And yesterday was kind of one with Net. Uh, from the Girl Scouts, but tomorrow we'll be airing one at 4 o'clock p.m. So tune in tomorrow right here on We Love Nogales at 4 o'clock p.m. There will be a We Love Nogales exclusive interview with Chief Roy Bermudez of the Nogales Police Department. We're, we're really excited about that. Um, ¿Sabías eso? 
No, no sabías eso. <risa> no Míralo. No, no, es que Todavía no, no, no he visto el promo. Ah, no, no has visto ah, el promo no. porque el Ergar no lo ha hecho. Ah, ok. Ah. Ya se me a la bolita, ¿no? Sí, 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 sí. And it, it, it won't be a full episode like my show or Santos' show. This will be just an interview, an on-location interview that we did with, with Roy Bermudez. And, and we're really excited to show it. I mean, he's a, he's got a great guy and some really good things that the police department is doing. Um, and, you know, since our mayor is going to be on our show tonight, he did say that he's very excited to work with, with um, the um, new or once again mayor, Arturo Garino. Uh, so, oh, real quick, before I jump into other new stuff that we're talking about, um, you know, we've talked about, we've said Happy New Year already. This is our, uh, you know, we've, this is how many shows have we done this this year already? Ya van tres, ¿no? Oye, yo me tengo que ir porque estamos todavía en la clase de, de preparación ah, de impuestos, bueno, pues. pero déjame decirte algo, ah. nada más que a la comunidad, que no se olvide que mañana es el día de mercado, Nogales uh, Mercado, y también tenemos el, el paseo en bicicleta en la tarde con el, el Friday Night Ride, Muy bien. así que es una oportunidad pues para hacer ejercicio y aparte para venir, consumir local y aparte invertir en su salud. Acuérdense que los productos que vendemos en el mercado, muchos de ellos son orgánicos, de aquí mismo tenemos un Community Garden y es una forma de que usted invierta en su salud y también invierta en una economía local. Recuerde que por cada dólar que usted gasta en un comercio local, nos vamos a quedar 43 centavos circulando nosotros mismos, que nos va a ayudar para poder crecer como negocio, y como ciudad y como comunidad. Cuando ese mismo dólar usted lo gasta en un comercio que es de una cadena, solamente se quedan 13 centavos. No les digo que gastemos todo en comercio local, pero parte de nuestro dinero que gastemos en forma local nos va a beneficiar mucho como ciudad y como claro comunidad. Que sí. ¿Okay? Claro que sí. Bueno, lo dejo con eso. Y que compren los libros del Joe Wright, del escritor Joe Wright, porque el dinero se queda aquí. ¿no? Claro, porque acuérdense que el, el, Joe, el Joe Wright es un escritor local y definitivamente él va a pagar aquí, ¿verdad? Por, por hacer las impresiones, por, por, por las oficinas, claro sí, por internet, es, por todo, son, son gastos directos. Es donde les digo, ¿verdad? Que el, el impacto es mayor porque pues son, son muchos costos y gastos que hacemos indirectamente aquí los negocios. También. Bueno, pues muchas gracias. Estamos en Gracias, yo, Santos, por a, venir con nosotros por unos minutitos. Gusto. Dale, vale. Thank you. Thank you. Eh. Con permiso. So, hablando, Edgardo, ¿tienes un gráfico de, de cero estrés o del Friday Night Ride que puedes poner rapidito? El, el video ahorita. El video. Pues, you saw the video that came in our ad right now. Um, I was, this actually perfect transition to what I want to talk about. I want to talk about New Year's resolutions. Um, if you have a New Year's resolution, I want you to send it to us. Um, you can put it in the comments. Um, I actually, we posted a, um, a, a little um, post asking people to share their New Year's resolutions with us. And next week, on next week's episode of In Línea, right here with Joe Wright, we will um, we'll share them if you're willing to let us. Uh, and a good way to keep your resolution, if your resolution is to lose weight or live a healthier, more active lifestyle, is to be part of Cero Estrés. Just join them out on the Friday night rides. Um, it's great exercise. It's great community. It's And it's, it's not a difficult ride. It's meant for beginners and for people who are just getting involved. And it's, it's a really easy, nice route. I haven't taken it yet because, um, I mean, look at me. <laughs> But I do have a bike and I've got plans. And I promise you, when we do finally do it, we will take a camera with us so you can be there watching me die. Um, <laughs> But we're um, Cero Estres tomorrow, Friday night ride, just like Santos said. Um, he also mentioned taxes. Um, there are places all over the community um, to do your taxes, and you don't have to do them with the big chains like um, H&R Block and um, Jackson Hewitt, which are great, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of local CPAs who can help you do your taxes right here at the Nogales Community Development um, with the AmeriCorps. They will help you do your taxes and get you the return that you deserve um, and uh, for free. So let's get into some new stuff. Um, this, is, this week is National School Choice Week. And like I said this morning, I was at the um, government affairs meeting for the Chamber of Commerce, and there were student council representatives from Lourdes Academy, Mountain View Elementary, and Desert Shadows Middle School. And it was great to see these kids talk, um, to talk about how they, their involvement in the community, involvement in their schools, and how they feel about it, and the passion that, that they feel about it. It was, it was great to see that in, in the um, younger generations. Um, I felt inspired, to be honest. In fact, on the way home, I, I gave somebody a ride and we were discussing uh, just that, how good it is to see younger generations feeling involved and getting involved and feeling some ownership for, for their school, for their community, for their peers, and, and actually working to, to improve on things. Uh, another thing, I mean, if you missed yesterday in the morning, our, we had a We Love Nogales exclusive with Janet Sanchez of the Girl Scouts of, Santa, of Southern Arizona. Um, and it was a great interview. They were doing their cookie drop. I mean, it's Girl Scout cookie season. I mean, I love Girl Scout cookie season. I got two boxes yesterday, and 
they're all gone. I didn't eat them myself. Don't worry. Don't worry. But uh, <laughs> my wife, my son, my mom and I, we, we went right through those boxes like crazy. Um, so keep an eye out for them. Keep an eye out for outside local businesses. They'll be starting tomorrow. Or, I'm sorry, starting Saturday. They're going to be outside Safeway, outside Garrett's. And they're going to be selling Girl Scout cookies. And, uh, and this helps them more than just fundraising. It's so much more than just a fundraiser. It's, it, sh- it helps them build skills, entrepreneurial skills leadership skills, um, great things, some great things that the Girl Scouts do for our community. Uh, we already, you know, Santos was here. We talked about AmeriCorps, all the good things that they're doing. They're helping out with the food bank, the community garden that the food bank and, and Nogales Community Development are doing. They're doing tax prep here at the community de- Nogales Community Development, and they're helping clear out the, um, the old Foxworth building so that it can be built up to be this business incubator for startups, local startups. And I'm really excited about that. I'm, I mean, considering that we love Nogales is one of the the first organizations to to jump in on that and um, to have that building and see that project really start to grow and take shape is it's exciting. I am very excited about it. Um, before we wrap up, I also want to let you know that you know you may have seen that we were at the Nogales Chamber of Commerce this Monday and a couple happened to walk in from Illinois. Really nice couple. They didn't want to go on camera, unfortunately, but they were they're really nice. They'd never been here before. They'd been to Texas. They'd been to San Diego, but they'd never been to Nogales. And they were a little apprehensive. They told me they admitted that they were a little nervous about coming this close to to the border, about coming to Mexico, considering everything they've seen on the news. Um, But they were happy to see. They were pleasantly surprised to see that there the danger that's being, you know, sensationalized in the news is is it's it's false i mean particularly for i can't speak for other communities because i don't live there i don't i don't have all the statistics on them but for nogales at least this is a safe community these people came to us from a city that has a murder rate of one or two people a day not a month not a year a day one or two people are murdered every day in their city and they were afraid to come here they were afraid to come to nogales because of the news because of the crisis that's being sensationalized and portrayed um, and that's damaging to us. The reason they decided to come here is because they wanted to see it for themselves. They wanted to see if it was true. And like I said, they were pleasantly surprised to find out that it was not. Um, and I'm glad that they came here, and I hope that they share that story with their friends and family back home, if they're, you know, share it on Facebook, wherever they are. Um, I hope they share that, and I hope that they let people know that we are safe, that we're a great, friendly community, and we love our visitors, and we love everybody that comes through here. Uh, it was, I, you know, I mean, you've been watching, if you've been watching my show for, for the last few months, you know how passionate I get on this subject. It's, it bothers me to see the negative representation of Nogales in the news um, when it's such an incredible community. All right, so we've, there's an event coming up. Obviously, this weekend is the Super Blood Moon. I'm really, really excited about this. My father was obsessed with astronomy, and um, my son is starting to really get into it, so I'm really, really excited to see the Super Blood Moon. Um, I know the Tumacacri Mission had been planning an event. I don't know with the shutdown if that's, if that's still going on. Um, but there's also another event coming up that the county attorney, George Silva, is doing with the, uh, with the Consulado General. And that is the, it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It's going to be on January 24th at 5.30 p.m. It's a motivation seminar. It's La Clave para Cumplir Nuestros Propósitos de Año Nuevo. So how, the, basically, the key to um, to accomplishing your New Year's resolutions. So show up, I mean, like I said, January 24th at the Consulado General at 5.30 p.m. Um, and find out what you need to do to really, really keep your, your New Year's resolution. So we're going to take another break right now, but before we do that, I want you to, like I said before, please give us a like and a share. Share us everywhere. Let everybody know what's going on. When we come back, we'll be here with uh, Mayor Arturo Garino, and talking about the exciting stuff that's happening in the city right now. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Okay, welcome back. We're here with the Honorable Mayor Arturo Garino. And before we get started, I want to thank you for for my pins that I've got that add some flash to my outfit. There right you here. go. Está bien. Yeah, and I'm proud to represent the city of Nogales. That's what you get when you vis visit my office. Absolutely. If anybody Absolutely. visits the office just for a visit, you don't have to be there in business. I'll make sure you take a pin with you. Awesome. Very, very cool. So some exciting things happening with the city, but let's start with... Um, your inauguration, which just happened. I mean, we were there. We live streamed it. It was it was a great event. I mean, Marco Lopez was there. I mean, some, yes. some incredible people were there. Um, the Honorable Thomas Fink mm -hmm. swore you and the new councilman and councilwoman in. Um, it was great. It was great to be there and see all the people that were there just to to see this change uh, in the city. Actually, it was a, I'm very happy. It was a very nice event and it was well planned. And and you know, this is this is uh. I give all the credit uh, to my wife, Kathy, and to Lisa Montiel that, you know, that worked on that, and city staff, some of the city staff that put, put it all together, and, and actually it was put in two days. It was, you know, I think it was, um, it was exactly the way it should be, you know, for an agro of, of uh, three council and, 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 and the mayor. And and the people that attended, there had to be close to 400 people there. Oh yeah, it was you great. Know, it was great. And even though it was very cold, yeah. <laughs> they they say it was colder inside the building than it was that it was outside. But, and uh, even um, uh, State Representative Rosana Garbadon was there. She yes, was there to see it. Yes, see and, and Mayor cool. from Saguarita was yeah, there. That's right. Mayor uh, Jaime Jesus Puyol was there yep. from Nogales Sonora. There were some great people. A lot of council people from Nogales Sonora were there. Yeah. Which is which is good because as as you know I spoke about the sisterhood agreement and manamiento yeah, absolutely and um, that's coming around the corner yeah that's, Jam, uh, we'll talk about that yeah. right now too yeah it's coming around the corner so those are the things that we're going to be working with uh, 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 this this coming year so that we can get a lot of things done especially uh, by national you know and and like I said my number one. Uh, a commitment for Nogales is economic development. Of course, absolutely. you know, and, and try to get as many opportunities for job employment for people in Nogales and uh, of all ages. And uh, and we have to, as a city, we have to make sure that that comes around, and not only with existing businesses but new businesses coming to town, so that you know there's there's more opportunities in the, in that area. But, Definitely, definitely. You know, those, that's what we're going to be working on. So, you know, let's, you know, we, like some of the things that were mentioned in the inauguration by Marco Lopez, you know, was when he was mayor, you were working in public works. And, mm -hmm. and this is something that we talked about when you were on our show last time was your experience within the city and stuff like that. Ah, and one more thing. Uh, no se olvida dar crédito a tu master of ceremony, oh, Joe Agostini. Joe Agostini, yes. Of course. He did a good el job. El incomparable, no? Joe Agostini. <laughs> he did a very good job. Yes, he did. Of course, yes. absolutely. Um, so shout out to Joe, of course. El mi tocayo, no? Joe. There you go. There you go. Um, another um, great uh, member of our community who, who does yes. a lot. and Absolutely. Um, but we talked about last time you were here and you know, Marco Lopez talked about it too, was your experience within the city. I mean, and, and with public service and things like that. And, um, and this isn't even your first time as mayor, you know, no. <laughs> you've been mayor yeah. before. Um, what do you plan to do? You plan to do things differently than you did last time? Yes, of course. Uh, it's a different time. All right. And, and, um, especially with, with what's happening uh, economically in Nogales, you know, I, I've never seen as many stores closed in Nogales in, in my time. You know, when I was mayor during my four years, no stores closed. Everything was going smooth, even though it was go getting to the point of, you know, of having problems uh, go going past the recession and certain things. You know, we still managed to stay open, have the stores open, and, and but there, there was certain things that we did different uh, back then than the past administration did is that we met with the, with the port people, you know, the port director, with mayors from Douglas and from San Luis. We met and we had meetings and, and discussed issues. Back then, our main issue was the perception of crime, the perception, per, perception of, of uh, not being a safe community. Mm -hmm. The issue now is economic development. Yeah. The issue now is it's different. You know, so I inherited a problem back then, and now I inherited another problem. So, so my, my way of thinking this way is, is 
making sure that the whole council, uh, we all dedicate ourselves to this and that we work hard. And I've been having meetings with the city manager, deputy city manager, about this and the, and the finance director because we have to make sure that we do have the funds to be able to do the jobs that we need to do, like paving and, and you know, day in, day out, the stuff that you do in the city. But we need to also think about public, private, you know, um, finding ways of doing that, also yeah. incentive programs, uh, also the waivers, you know, that you can bring in, so you can bring in uh, companies. And for us to be, you know, the lobbyists, the city council, the mayor, and our city staff to go out. I was invited on the 23rd. I'm going to Tucson. Uh, I'm going to be part of a forum with three mayors. Okay. And it's economic development. It's the awesome. Arizona Economic Development Forum. And, and uh, I'm, I'm so glad that they invited me. They, they have it every, every year. And, um, and I'm going to be able to express the ideas that we have here in Nogales for that and also be able to talk to the other two mayors and so that maybe we can work together on this because it's a mayor from uh, Oro Valley and the mayor from Sierra Vista. So we're basically very close. Absolutely. And so uh, as, as border mayors, and we all have the same idea, you know, and, and, and you, you can talk to any mayor north of Nogales and their concern is, uh, okay, are we gonna get that flow of Mexican citizens coming to their communities to buy? You know, that, that, that is very important for their economies as well as our economy. So we'll be able to, you know, exchange ideas. And, and, and uh, also, there's going to be like a question thing. They're going to, they're going to ask us questions, which is good. Yeah, and then absolutely. there's going to be questions asked by the public at the same okay. time. So, um, so an open forum. Yeah, it's an open forum, yes. Economic development forum, yeah. actually. So um, I'm going to go there and represent Nogales and, and take our ideas over there because, remember, we also need people from Tucson and Phoenix to come to Nogales. Yeah. All right. Not only to Nogales, Arizona, but to visit Nogales, Sonora. Too. Absolutely. So these are the things that we're going to be working in. And, and it's not a lot different than what I did four years ago, but in a, in a bigger scale, in a scale that we're really going to be very active and, and we're going to work very hard. We're going to be continuously working. For the, since I took office uh, on the second and, and, and the third after the inaugural, I've been to City Hall till about 8 o'clock at night. And, and uh, so, you know, uh, uh, everybody's really anxious. Everybody's really happy. So we just want to make sure that uh, that momentum stays there so that we can continue working for the citizens of Nogales. Of course. You know, one of the things talking with, um, with other officials and other locals here in the community is that they're excited about is this that you're you're a great you, you know they, they they identify you as a great communicator for the city of Nogales somebody who reaches out you don't just sit here and wait you reach out to to um, state and federal um, groups organizations and and um, elected officials to to promote Nogales advocate for Nogales and things like that um, some of the concerns that I've gotten are you know you you mentioned a lot of great things that are going to help economic development but they're all very expensive. Yes. You know, they can be at least. Um, and, you know, over the last you know, few years, there were rate hikes in water and things like that. Um, I, some people are worried on how economic, economic development will happen and still be affordable for the people of Nogales. Well, you know, those rate hikes uh, took place these past four years, you know, and I'm going to make sure that I, I, I take control of that. Um, the rate hikes, for what I understand, were done because they need to... Uh, fix infrastructure within the city, which is proper Reasonable. thing. Yeah, there, are, there is infrastructure within yeah, the city. That that's needs to what be you need to do to yeah. be able to fix the infrastructure and make sure you always have the right service, the good service in the water. Uh, but you really have to get active and do it, okay? Of course. And that's one thing I talked to the city manager about. We need to do those jobs. If, if, if you're um, asking the residents of Nogales to pay more on the water, let's get to doing those jobs. So he understands that, and, and these are the projects we're going to be doing and addressing. But uh, when it comes to economic development, uh, what I mean about economic development, I know that you can think it could be expensive, you know, certain things. But there's certain things that we can do within the city. We need to partner 
with the, you know not only the the businesses but the property owners of the business you know sometimes they need a little bit of help Absolutely. and 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 if they come to if, if they come to the city and the doors are closed and nobody listens well what happens eventually they might close the doors Absolutely. and at that time the, they might have six seven or ten employees they lose their jobs and that's when you start going down and, and people going you know having problems financially everybody has bills to pay all right so we as a city we have to make sure that those things don't happen and that's why when i spoke in my inaugural i said we were going to have a, an open door policy and it's already open yeah both doors the one going into the the hallway my assistant's door is open and my door is open no locks no nothing you go over there you talk to the receptionist and they'll They'll escort you into the office. Oh, yeah. and to talk. We were there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you were <laughs> We've there. We've been there. We've actually yeah. been there twice to, yes. to visit, and we got right in. And and I also told everybody that it was going to be a responsible, it was going to be a transparent, and with accountability. Okay, those are the key things we need to do. But we have to concentrate, and we have to do that as a community. And I've also said that I'm asking everybody, the whole community, all the residents of Nogales, to be part of this government. Uh, yeah, see, that's yeah. one of the other things that I really wanted to talk to you yes, about. Yes, to be part of this government, because yeah. if you're part of this government, you won't allow us to do a bad job. You'll be, you'll make sure that we're there, because we'll, we, we're there to listen to you, and we're there to do the best we can to, for, for our city in Nogales, and that's what I, I plan to do. Now, one of the things that you, like you mentioned in your, um, in your speech was that the people of Nogales need to take ownership yes. of their community. Um, yes. And they should, anybody should, in any community should take some ownership and responsibility for their own community. Uh, but how can people do that? Like you said, you want them to be part of their government. What do they need to do to do well, that? Like you it, said, you got an open door. Yeah, you know? well, first of all, you know, they'll, they all have ideas. They all have, you know, things that they want to see done, not only for themselves, for their neighborhood, <laughs> for their children, you know, for the future of Nogales. Let's listen. As a government, let's listen. You know, the, uh, the way I look at it, you know, um, we are the ones that are going to communicate to higher ups at the state level, federal level, their needs. Of course. Okay. So, so if we if we um, pay attention and listen, and and when they do go to the city, but I I I, I don't mean you just have to talk to me. I expect you to talk to the council also. There's six council yep. that that we're going to be part of this, and we're going to be a team. And, and this is how we get to make agenda items, you know? Because uh, I can be walking down the street and somebody can say, hey, Mayor, you know, this, this, and this, and then it goes, hey, you know what? That's a great idea. I can take it back to the city manager. We can talk about it between us. And we can say, you know what? Let's put an agenda item about this. Very you know, good. and then bring it out to the public so that uh, that agenda item can be an agenda item that we just discuss or it can be an agenda item that we can take action on it. And so, so this, is, this is my plan, these are my plans. And, and this is why I say, if, if I do good, it's because of you. That's yeah, why good. I'm gonna do good, well, because you know, you're gonna help me do it. You actually, you brought up another point, you know, the city council, and this is something that we've, when you were on our show, we talked about this, when um, Councilman um, Hector um, Bojorquez was on our show, we talked about this. I mean, even when Dr. Varona was on her show, we talked about it. And this is that um, the mayor is, this is not a strong mayor form of government. Yes. Not everything falls on your shoulders. Um, it, you are one vote in the city council and the council is, needs to work together to, to yeah. actually accomplish anything, yes. you know? Um, and I, I feel like maybe some people in the city don't understand that yet, that they, maybe even some people that work in the city don't understand that yes. yet, you know what I mean? Um, and that for any real change to be made is something needs to be discussed by the city council and it needs to and a, a vote needs to be taken yes and you know sometimes uh you elect a mayor that thinks that when he gets in there he's going to do the way he wants to do the things and forget the city council and that's where you cause that that those problems in the city council and that's where you start dividing the council and then you, that's when you get that 3-4 vote, that famous 3-4 vote, mm -hmm. you know, or 2-5 or whatever. So, so what we need to do is, is, is concentrate on the real issues, not petty stuff. You know, there, there's no time. 
to sit on the, on the dais at, at the city council and talk about little petty stuff that, you know, that could be fixed internally without even taking it to the city council. Because a lot of the, a lot of the issues internally can be fixed by the city manager. That's why you have a city manager. That's what they're for. You right? know, so if you take them outside that, you know, you're, you're basically uh, using the council's time for issues that really don't pertain to the residents of Nogales and to our city. So let's, let's concentrate. Everything that we put on the agenda is for that. And, and let's have a good dialogue. If we have to debate about the issue, let's debate and let's try to convince each other that the vote is supposed to be positive. Let's make it positive. Like I said, it's not always going to be, you know, 100% unanimous. But if I can get them all unanimous votes, I'm going to be a good mayor. Yeah. Because that's that's what a mayor is supposed to do. He's supposed to make sure that the council works and there's civility in the council chambers. Okay, and not only between the council but with the audience. No, because um, that is important. And that's that's something that is very important. And and there hasn't been uh, <laughs> cooperation within the city council for some time. I, and and this even during your previous administration, there were there were difficulties with the city council butting of heads and things like that. Um, now we've got um, Esther Melendez is back there on the city council. We've got Hector Bojorquez. Um, we've got um, Councilman Maldonado, um, Dr. Verona, Nubar Hanesian, and um, and Robert Rojas. And, you know, it's a it's a pretty good group of people, people that I that I like and mm -hmm. I respect. Um, do you perceive those problems happening in the future? I mean, that I, same sort I of. I really don't think so. I've I've had every one of them, except for Mr. Verona. Councilman Varona in my office of our, since I got uh, into office, and I've talked to them about the way I want to have things done. They agree. They agree, and they're very positive. And they've all uh, mentioned that they want to work with me, and they want to work with the city manager and staff. And and um, they are, each one of them has different ideas of what they want and and projects. You know that that they're interested. You know, you can have somebody involved in recreation. Somebody's a, some people are involved in art and culture. You know, and and uh, border border relations and Absolutely. binational relations. So it's good. Yeah, it's a course. good group of people that, that diverse. You can, yeah, diverse. So uh, yes, uh, uh, you know, I expect uh, that we're gonna do we're gonna do well. Okay. You know, and Hector Bohork is. He was a director like I was a director. Yeah, absolutely. He He's worked with budgets. The, yeah. He knows numbers. He's a numbers like guy. They, so yeah. so when you have people like that that already worked as an employee of the city, as a director, uh, like myself and, and, and Hector, a, you have people there that have experience when it comes to budgets. Dr. Varona was mayor. Yep. Okay. He sure was. He was mayor and city council. and, and Oh, and, man. I, I was looking at the picture of him as mayor the other day, and I, I think it would have been awesome if we had that picture with him now. I should have taken it down to show a comparison of how he was the, then. You know that everybody's doing this 10-year challenge now, yeah. right? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's just like me when I was mayor. Uh -huh. I look the same right now. Yeah, you haven't aged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but I have the same amount of hair. You should have kept the mustache. Uh, yeah, well, that, you know, that, <laughs> th I thought about that too, but I figured I'd go, you know, clean up a little bit, you know. But, but um, you know, there's, there's, a lot, there's, there's a lot that we have to do. I'm not saying that there isn't, but we started good. We started good. We have great plans. We have a great plan to start working on the budget soon. We're not going to wait, you know, probably start working on it next month, okay. you know, and as preparing to so that we can have an idea what council, uh, what certain councilmen want, you know, like for street paving and certain infrastructure course, issues, yeah. bonds and stuff like that. We need to work. All, we need to start working about all those things and um, and uh, making sure that uh, that there's an opportunity. You know how? You know, people go to the council meetings, you know, and, and I feel the same way sometimes. They go to council meetings and they sit there because they want to listen. But council meetings could be intimidating, yeah. you know, <laughs> especially if you have to stand on the, on the podium uh -huh. to talk and call to the public. Of course. So, so what I tell people, I say, look, if you, if you feel like you're, you're not comfortable, you know, going on the podium, mentioning your name and your address and then addressing the mayor and council, you have, you know, five minutes to do that. The only thing is that we cannot respond. We cannot, you, we, you know, we just listen. But we can later on agenda that item or whatever it is. But if you, if you feel different, go to my office. 
You know, I plan to uh, probably start next month uh, being there. Like I said, I've been there till 8 o'clock at night. If you get out of work at 5, you know, what I'll do, I'll probably open up the city hall, the lobby, maybe once a week, in the, late in the afternoons, and maybe every, uh, every other fr Saturday in the mornings. And we can have some coffee and some pan dulce. <laughs> and, and we can talk about it because if you, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it in the council chambers, come talk to me. Call me. You know, and, and matter of fact, right now, I'll give you my cell number. This is my cell number. And my cell number is 313-0332. Call me. That's my number. I carry that phone with me. And I'm not afraid to give you my cell number because that's the way I want to be uh, as your leader and as your mayor of the city of Nogales. Wow, that's that's huge that you just yeah, that you just did it. Yeah. That, that's very cool. That's very, very cool. Um, you know, one of the infrastructure things that I want to talk about before we get to before it gets too late, we still got time, but is um, the uh, since, you know, we here we love Nogales. We're huge advocates of Cerro Estres and the biking groups that are forming and stuff like that. And the bike lane issue is something that's no, been Don't coming. tell me you still want me to get on a bicycle. Yeah, let's and do it. Gardner, Come on. <laughs> Gardner's been wanting me to do that. I know. I, I bought a bicycle. Okay. But it's a stationary one. It's in the bedroom. Ah, there you go. It's in the bedroom <laughs> of the house. And when it's not holding a jacket uh, <laughs> on the handlebars, that's what mine does. That's I, get, mine does. I get on it once in a while. Nice, nice, nice. Well, well but uh, I, do, I do need to do exercise. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what, when I do, when I do my um, Friday night ride, yeah. I'll challenge you to come with me. Well, well I'll do that. They've got, they've got bikes. They've um, got Cerro extra Tres bikes? Got, they've got extra bikes. Uh, they and have we'll, helmets we'll together. I, I'm sure that I will make you look very good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if we start at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, no, I'd be glad to do that. But you, you were going to say? Um, the bike no. lane issue, you know. Yes. That's, and, 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 and from what I understand, there's been an issue, an argument between whether or not the state was in charge of, of maintaining that road or whether it was the city's responsibility is that correct yes what it is uh, uh, one of the main roads uh, for bicycles and i see a lot of bicycles use it's grand avenue uh but they use it at their own risk okay uh, there is no bike lane yeah. and 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 the way the state what happens is when you um apply a bike lane to a road be it city or be it state or whatever uh they take responsibility because you're putting a bike lane and, and basically saying you can be in this space between this solid white line and the curb and, and with signage and everything, and you can do that. Yeah. So, so what I, I plan to do, as, and as a matter of fact, I, I received a letter from, from uh, the director of transportation. Uh, I'm going to hope to meet with him soon. Uh, I want to mention to him uh, how we can do that. Okay. I know Grand Avenue has the space to do it. I just want to see it's a it. wide road. Yeah, it's a very wide road. Morley Avenue, the one of the roads uh, that is more commonly used by Cerro Estres, but that's where they start every Friday, um, is a city road. Uh, but what that road has, it, it's got it narrows and it widens and narrows yeah. and it widens. So we have to make sure we have enough space for the vehicles. But uh, we were, we're, we'll look into that, see if we can do anything. All the, all the roads in Nogales, almost all of them are the cities, except for Grand yeah, Avenue, yeah. Mariposa Road, and Arroyo Boulevard. And those are state routes. Those are state routes. Uh -huh. okay. So if anything uh, uh, we can do on those, we have to go through them. And they would probably be the ones doing the signage, and they would be probably the ones doing the, the, the line, the solid white line. But... We'll see. We'll see how far they want to take that. If not, we just have to work in our roads and use those as crossroads and, and just be very careful that when you're on the bicycle on those roads. They, they, there's no, they can't say you can't go on the road. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just that you just have to be very careful. You know what I found out just the other day, actually, when we were talking to Chief Bermudez, is when I was riding the bike a few years ago, is I would use the sidewalks. Because I would go to Grand Grand Avenue mm -hmm. and there is no bike lane. Yes. But I found out there's actually an ordinance that says that you, you can't use sidewalks. sidewalks. So I was breaking the law all that yes, time. Yes, <laughs> you know, I think you would have probably a, a easier accident on a uh -huh. sidewalk uh -huh. because you might come across a pedestrian or, or somebody, uh, you know, in a wheelchair, and there's only enough room. Well, I actually, one and you're going to have to jump off the curb on that. And um, if anybody's going to get hurt, it's probably the one jumping off the curb. I actually, um, I actually 
crashed on the sidewalk right in front of City Hall years ago, you know, years ago. And the sidewalk has been fixed since then. But uh, just because there was a little bit... A little you bit damaged off. the sidewalk? Uh, yeah, I broke the sidewalk. As soon as I landed, <laughs> man, it <laughs> cracks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, we have to do that. But, you know, not only bicycles, a lot of... A lot of we have a lot of walkers. Yeah, absolutely. We need to do paths. We need to, uh, you know... Have friendly paths also, you know, kind of some especially what's happening in Rico. good lighting. Yes, good lighting on these important. paths and and identifiable paths. You know where you can say, you know, okay, you can go through here with no problem, and and um, and, and you know a lot of people like to walk uh, in, into neighborhoods, which is no problem. Some neighborhoods have very narrow, especially in the Monte Carlo area, very narrow sidewalks, if yes, they have absolutely. any at all. Absolutely. Because they were constructed many, many years ago before a lot of the codes that we have now. And, and a lot of people yeah. walk in Monte Carlo. They I mean, do. kids walk to school. They do, but uh, Calle Sonora and Calle Bafford are pretty good. Yeah. You know, they have good... But the what notes. I mean is, uh, if we can do paths, that you don't even have to do uh, paving. Yeah. You can do paths with... Uh, with shale or decomposed granite or even uh, millings and and just so that you can have a nice walking path uh, we can do all that and all that is for wellness for health you Absolutely. know we we need to be a good uh, a clean city and a healthy city like i've said you know and and we have to continue with that initiative that was that was passed by me when i was vice mayor uh, before i was mayor yeah. and and thanks to the mayor at the time and the council <laughs> we passed it and it's an initiative that we should continue to do continue uh, doing because uh, uh, some of us are getting older. Yeah. Just some of us, okay? Like I'm getting said, older every day. Right? Not all of us, but some <laughs> of us are it, getting I older. I feel it every day. And, and we need to walk to get stay healthy. Of course. And, and, uh, and not only that, but uh, uh, a lot of people like to walk with their friends in the morning. And, and I see them at, on P at Pearson. Oh, yeah. Which is pretty good because we have an IGA with the school, and we help them by doing the paving around the the pearson uh field and it, a lot of people walk there in the mornings and then you know they go there and they talk and they continue walking and it's it's health at the same time and and then you're having a good conversation with your friends and and having a good time and that that's that's being a friendly and a healthy and a, a good community of course. i like to see those things yeah also. it's awesome when people are yes. are get together and i mean and strangers even yes. and just start talking mm -hmm. and and you meet him um so speaking of healthy, I mean, have you made a New Year's resolution? You know, I didn't. You didn't? No, I didn't. You know, do I, I the only healthy, you know, my New Year's resolution is uh, not health-wise, but uh, my New Year's resolution is, is that I'm going to do the best job I can as mayor. All right. and, and, um, and I'm only doing it this year. I'm not going to do it next year, New Year's, the following year, New Year's, because I, I plan to do it for the, for the whole, four, four, four four years. years. And, so it's and a four-year resolution. Yeah, four-year resolution. I'm going to work very hard for that, and 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 um, and I'm, 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 I want to make sure that everybody's proud of our city, you know. And 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 I know that's it's going to be very tough. It's going to be tough to do it because um, a lot of people don't have work, and and uh, and they see their children leave and. And and they graduate and, and they leave. My my kids left too, but you know they wanted to, they want that's what they wanted. They didn't leave because they didn't like no gals or love no gals. They just wanted to move. They they were in Tucson. They moved to Phoenix now. Absolutely. So they moved to, from two different communities. Of course. And and I myself I left when I graduated not because I didn't want no gals. I went it was the other way around. I went to war. Yep. You know I, I volunteered to the Navy and I, I was in Vietnam. But you know there's different ways of people leave, leaving. And my, I was talking to Marco Lopez, and, and he says, you know, people come back. Look, Absolutely. I left. I came back. Yep. I became a police officer, a firefighter, public works director. And mayor. And mayor, <laughs> city council. Uh -huh. you, you leave and you come back. Absolutely. But why? Because th this is where we planted our seed. Yep. This is where our roots are, and we love Nogales, and we just, we just have to continue I, doing it. I and I know everybody that leaves Nogales misses Nogales. Oh, yeah. Because I, I have my sister-in-law, they're, they're up in Napa, and they miss Nogales. There are the people who watch this show who all the time are commenting how mm -hmm. much they miss Nogales. Yeah. Um, and I, I talk to people that I went to school with all the time who, who talk about how much they miss the community or have come back to the community mm -hmm. already. Oh, there's you a know? lot of people that come back. Oh, I yeah. talk to a lot of people. And it brings people back. You know, and they, they, like they go, they come back. Sucks and you they, in. <laughs> and they come back with a knowledge. They come back with uh, opportunities, employment opportunities, because there's people here in Nogales that have left and come back, and they have a nice business that Absolutely. they hire people. And so that's what we need to continue doing. 
We of need course. to continue doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, so we are pretty much out of time, but there's one last thing that I want to talk about, and that's, um, you know, you've got a, the team that you have at City Hall right now. I mean, you've got yourself, you've got um, Lisa Montier as your yes. assistant. Um, um, Dr. Um, Frank Felix Felix, is uh, your uh, your city city manager, manager. John Kissinger, your deputy city Mm -hmm. manager, Roy Bermudez, your police chief, Um, Captain Valencia is your, I mean, Chief Valencia is your fire chief. You've got a pretty solid team at City Hall right now. Yes, and and a great team, you know, and and I'm glad to to be able to work with them, and and, uh, and I hope they're pleased with what we do as, as elected officials. And, and actually, uh, uh, with Lisa, Montiel in my office, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. You know, it's unbelievable how many people uh, uh, really like her, how professional she is. And, and uh, you know, her, her skills with people are unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I've, been, you know, I've been seeing her there in the office and the way she, people come in and, and, and actually recognize her and, and, and talk to her and how she treats the people that show up there. And, and customer service is my number one thing. In and I want that okay, not only to be sure. on the side of the mayor, but also in the finance and water department. So we're going to have to make sure that all that, that all uh, really absorbs the vibes that are going to come out of my office and, and that side of the building with the, with, the, with the city manager and the deputy city manager in my office, that everybody sees how you know we want to do things for everybody. And, and it's all happening there with Lisa. Absolutely. So some very, very exciting things that are happening in City Hall right now. Um, looks like a bright future for the next four years, at least. Uh, let's see what happens. You know, I mean, one thing, you know, people say there might be a honeymoon period, but I, I feel like you've got a pretty solid four years ahead of you. No, I, I don't have a honeymoon period. I've been, yeah. this is not my first role. Yeah, yet. exactly. You know, <laughs> honeymoon periods is for when somebody is the first time they become mayor, the first time they come. Yeah. You know, uh, I came in already knowing what to do, how to do it. And, and, and all I need to do is just make sure that I continue doing that and working with the council. We have to work as a group, and this is a great city council that we have. We shouldn't have any problems when it comes to um, doing what we need to do for the residents of Nogales and, and, and doing what we need to do on the dais, Absolutely. which is a key thing for everybody. Very, very cool. And I am very excited, and I don't want to say I'm biased, but, oh, oh wait, yeah, actually, you know what? There, we actually have... Some comments. I'm sorry. I completely ignored the comments that we have. I apologize. So um, we actually have quite a few. <laughs> Let's see. Um, well, we do have a lot of um, new revenue to Nogales from Laura, Laura Martinez. Laura Martinez. Yes. She says, um, bring in new revenue to Nogales so that the international shoppers don't bypass us and go straight to Tucson. Bring jobs to town. It's time for growth and change. Yes. Those are the things that I'm going to be talking with uh, uh, Presidente Municipal uh, Puyol. The, uh, that's, that's probably one of the things we're going to be talking uh, at the Sisterhood Agreement. Awesome. Oh, uh, we by didn't the way, talk about the Sisterhood the Agreement. The Sisterhood Agreement. The anniversary is in February the 3rd. And, and, but uh, the day that we're going to uh, address the, the Sisterhood Agreement and talk about it with the consulate, both consulates, it's going to be February the 7th. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So you're invited to go there, and uh, I'm going to have the meeting with them on Tuesday just to verify exactly what time and and the venue. Okay. Once I get that, um, you'll I would love to be there. So that you guys can be there. Maybe mm-hmm. you can mention it, uh, you know, next next time you have a you have a, your show. Absolutely. So you can invite the people because it's That'd very be important. And And – the sisterhood agreement, just for uh, the ones that don't know what it is, it's an agreement that that you, we talk uh, that has articles that you work on. For instance, the environment, tourism. You talk about uh, economic development, border security. You talk about even sports. All right. You talk about uh, uh, the wait times at the border. All, that, all these articles, this is a working document. So what I, the meeting I had with, with uh, Presidente Municipal Puyol is that we have to make sure that we continuously revise it because as times go, things, different things happen, and we have to make sure that this is done in a way that future governments, future administrations mm-hmm. can use this document to, to continue 
with those articles so that they can improve our cities, Absolutely. both cities. So it is it's key. And yeah. those are the things it's, we're going to be talking about. You it's know, more than just a handshake. And a, and no, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, we might shake hands. You know, vamos a dar un abrazo. But we're really going to talk a lot of things about. You know, All right. So another doing. another comment from Laura. What we keep to keep going is, she says, put Nogales on the map as a place to visit, as a place to plant your roots. Growth is a big plus. She's not from Nogales originally, but it has been sad to see people leave to look for other, for jobs elsewhere. Um, kids of working age can't find jobs. Um, can't find a job. Make Nogales a place where people want to stay and watch families grow together. Yes. We're now, gonna, we're well, actually, gonna. can I make a comment on this one yes. really quick? Because when I hit working age, um, it was before the economic crisis mm. in the United States. It was pre-2008. And Nogales was full of jobs. You know, And a lot of people that I grew up with stayed in Nogales because you were able to get a job mm -hmm. almost anywhere yes. at the time. Um, but I've seen the same thing that she mentioned is a lot of people when they hit college age or working age, they, they take off. And it's not just because they're going to college, it's because mm -hmm. they need jobs. Yes. Um, so, you know, do well, you guys, that, and that's key that see that that's why, uh, it's so important that we sit down at, at the sisterhood agreement and talk about that because in the seventies, there used to be the twin plants. That's why you yeah. had a job Yeah. because there was a lot of work. And the twin plants were, there was a company here and a company across the line. And it wasn't produce. It was the maquiladora industry. Absolutely. And they had, they had like great. Like BD Medical, for example, yeah, is one that's still here. They yeah. had great opportunities to get a job back then. Well, those, those left with NAFTA and everything else, you know, changing. And the times and the global economy and everything. It wasn't a Nogales thing. It was national. It was national. It was going global. Uh, so, but it's coming back. These, these are coming back. But the only reason they're coming back is because uh, governments or administrations from both sides of the border, and I'm talking from San Diego to Brownsville, they're looking for that. Yeah. And, and the, they're getting people to come to work, and they're uh, north, you know, instead of being in, in Toluca or in Mexico or something, they're coming over here bringing their knowledge, and, and that knowledge will easily be transmitted into our side. And, and what we need to do with that is... is be able to talk to businesses that are north of here and, and convince them by having those incentives that I'm talking about and those waivers so these companies can come and we can help them, you know, build their business here, you know, and have a good department that, that will facilitate, I mean, make things easier for them, you know. It's, 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 it's you don't, what you want to do is with these companies, I'll give you an, uh, give you an, an idea of an incentive. Well, real, real quick, because you're actually, what you're talking about is, um, is transitions to the next comment that we had, which is from a friend of our show, um, George um, Jimenez, who's in charge of Trucas Nogales, who they gave us that award that's on okay. the wall right now. Mm -hmm. um, and he said to help small business get permits so they can open businesses and build Nogales yes. again. Yes, and that's, those are the means I've been having with planning and zoning and, and the city manager. And that's uh, that's under those incentive programs that I that I'm talking about, you know, it's, and it's public private funding too. Okay, the city needs to be part of that business. By what I mean by part is helping them get started, and 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 when it comes to the permits, you know, you need to have a one stop shop where you go there, present your permit, they help you pass this permit, go through the, uh, the plan review, go through the whole process so that you're not waiting two, three weeks, a month to get that permit and spending money after money after money to getting it done. We need the city planning and zoning department to help you on that. And we've been having those conversations. So that's the direction that our planning and zoning department is going. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think we're going to be very successful with that. You know, Laura, Laura Martinez, she actually has a lot of really good comments. Um, Laura, I'm sorry we might not be able to get all your comments today, but I'm sure that Margarino will be happy to... She's to, got my number. Yeah, there you go. Okay, she'll be happy to, yeah. to discuss these with you. And we talked about some of them, and we talked about business. So she asked about diversity with business, Morley Avenue, um, to add some diversity to Morley yes. Avenue, not just have the same kind of store. Um, Jorge went on again to actually... Well, this one might be a little bit more difficult to tackle and may require some further discussion um, that we might not have the time for now. But he's asking, you know, let the community decide, not a council, um, you know, what's best mm -hmm. for the city. He you know, says, come on, let's move. He loves his city. And it's hard to see Nogales like this. And then, Laura, this is one that I'd like to talk about because I was one I was thinking. And she says kid-friendly parks. 
But what about dog-friendly parks? You know, we well, talked about. I, matter of fact, today I had a conversation with uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Felix about that ah, because uh, uh, I had several conversations during my campaign with people that they want to have a dog park. Yeah, we you know because you know you mentioned um, Pearson. I yes. love to walk Pearson, you know, but you can't take a dog. No, no. And that, I have dogs. That's a school property. Yeah, that's absolutely, why. absolutely. Yes. And and I mean, they don't want to have dogs. Yeah, yeah. You know, dog doodle, dog doodle <laughs> all over their all over their playground and not yeah. their playground, their field. Yes. Um. So it's obvious. There's any obvious reasons why you can't. But the Nogales is missing. We no, and we have we have a lot of uh, areas that belong to the city that we easily do that. You know, all you have to have is an, a fenced enclosure. Big enough so the dogs can, you know, run around and play with, you know, all dogs in there and the owners. And all you have to have is uh, uh, those little gloves where you pick up, you know, after the dog does his business and trash cans and basically and, and maybe water troughs. It, it really is not that much of a deal. It's a fenced area with grass, nice grass and stuff. In yeah. And I think we need to work on that because it, I was asked about that a lot during my campaign. No, oh, really? About yes. the dog park thing? Yes. Huh? A lot of people have their dogs in there. They don't have cat parks, though. No, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a little bit different. Huh? Um, so one more thing that actually um, might not be something that, you can, that the city can handle because it's more of a private sector thing. But it says that we need, and this is from Jorge again, that we need nightlife at Morley. And he's not talking about, you know, just drinking. He's talking about, like, hot dogs, taco trucks, coffee, you know, little um, places, like little cafes, things like that. And, I mean, that is more of a, of a private sector. It's not something that the city necessarily can handle, can take care of. But working with Nogales Community But, you know, in the, with the permit process mm -hmm. and the assistance of a planning and zoning department and a good planning uh, 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 director, uh, you know, we can do those things, you know, help the owners of the properties so that they can transform their building into, uh, because most of the buildings are pretty big. You don't need a whole building, you know, for, for something like that. You need just the first floor of it, you know, and, and, and allow the city, allow like, say, um, on, on Fridays, like they have the mercado and, and, the, and allow that business to come outside in the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and so that people can walk there, you know, on, on, on warm days, you know, and, and, or cool nights, whatever. Have some music at the park, you know. Or hot chocolate yeah, on the cold, day, chocolate, cold days, yeah, you know, and cold yeah. nights. Um, one last thing, and this is actually a very, very specific comment. And then, and then we're going to have to wrap it up because we've been... We've been going for almost an hour. <laughs> Good, because yeah, uh, I was sitting here for three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know my monologue did run long tonight. No, I'm sure. joking. I'm joking. No. Um, now, Frances Cosio Duarte, she asked specifically to fix the road on McNabb by the water tower. Um, mm. And we talked about funding for that. You know, we talked about where funding from that comes from. Um, and, you know, the infrastructure plans for, for the city, I know they're very specific and they, they can take time. Um, what is the process that she needs to do to get that? I'm, I'm working on that road specific. That okay. I already, matter of fact, I, I produced a memo. Okay. And, and it's going to the city manager's hands tomorrow. And McNabb is one of the roads that I'm going to be working on. Awesome. And, and, and we're going to try to do that as, as soon as possible. I believe there's a couple of sections that it might need some infrastructure. By, by what I mean by infrastructure, water lines. But besides that, everything else is, is paving. But this is my, my plan. My plans are to do more in-house paving. Okay. We have great crews in the city. Yeah, absolutely. We have milling machines. We have paving machines. We have oil, tack oil machine and, and chip spreaders and everything. So what we need to do is, is use our staff to do it so that we can make our money go further. Okay? Not saying that we're not going to hire companies to do it because some of the jobs we're going to need companies when it's it's a big road that that we needed to do, uh, do it faster and maybe with a with a more con say a concrete base like industrial parks and stuff like that and then we need big companies to do that because we wouldn't be we wouldn't have the equipment for it we do have qualified crews to do it experienced crews to do it but I think. McNabb and some of the smaller streets in neighborhood areas, we could probably do it in house. And, and I'm going to be working. She's going to see that we're going to be working on that uh, soon. 
Awesome. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm personally, I'm very, very excited for, for what's coming in the next four years. And I may be a little biased. You know, I started journalism when you, during your previous administration. That's when I started doing my journalism here in the city. And, and I was able to see things that happened then and movement that was going on. And it got me very excited. So I, I may be a little biased about, you know, my emotions over the next four years. But I'm very excited. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. And, and I hope you give me an opportunity to be in your show. Oh, yeah. More because as, as, as time goes on, you're going to see different things that probably we have accomplished. Uh, and then things, uh, uh, different items that I think it's it's good uh, for the residents to know that what we're doing, and and also especially during the budget process, I want to make sure that everybody knows what budget we have, what intentions that we have as a council, and also uh, it's important that people attend the budget hearings that we have in the city. Of they're course. very they're they're long but they're very good. You understand a lot when you attend them because you'll actually know what direction each department head is taking their money for paving, for police protection, for fire protection, and the city manager recreation, and you'll know these things. And another thing before, if you give me just one second, um, I talked yeah, okay, <laughs> I, I talk to the city manager and, and, and the deputy city manager about recreation. Um, there's a lot of people that are very concerned because yes we have great little league parks we have uh we still have to improve our soccer fields but there's um we have parks that have uh, play equipment for children and and some of our play equipment is is not up to par and i already mentioned it to the city manager we're going to be working on that but not only on, on on fixing the ones that are not up to par but improving those parks so that they can have more play area for the children and also uh, a, a nice area for the parents to sit and and talk with their friends and have a good time while they're watching their children. So we're going to improve that too. We're going to work very hard on that. Awesome. Well, I'm hoping that you can come on. You know, get some, give us some regular city updates. You know, of what's yes. going on. Thank you very much. Because um, we want to, we want to keep informed and want to let the people keep informed. Um, really quick, um, in three words, three words. How do you feel about Nogales? I love Nogales. All right, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, so go ahead and look back in, our, in the videos right here on the, um, the We Love Nogales Facebook page, and you can watch the video that we have of the inauguration. Some great speeches, especially from our mayor. Um, and on, uh, on tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow at 4 p.m. will be our We Love Nogales exclusive with Chief Roy Bermudez, who's got some really other great things that are going on. And, you know, and lots of ideas that are that are in the process of moving and you know some aren't necessarily moving so smoothly but some are going through really well and and just like i said before exciting things happening and i know he wanted me to say we love nogales <laughs> i know he wanted me i love nogales like, he, works he wanted me to plug the show <laughs> <laughs> i love but, nogales works yes, just as yes, well it just does. It works just as well thank you very much because because we love nogales there you go there we you go. love nogales there you go um we'll see you guys next week and don't forget tomorrow with um chief bermudez and thank you for coming we're gonna have another ad break what you know support local business um support our sponsors oh man okay <laughs>